ready to go. She kind of stepped out when I said okay, and she wasn't supposed to do that, so I'm going to hold on to her. So you've got the reins attached to her bit through the shaft loops. The reason for that is because she can really turn and it gives a whole lot of, brings her head down. She has to move down with her head and it, and it stretches this whole top line. And people say, well, donkeys are supposed to put their head up when they move. Well, she'll put her head up when, when she moves, when she's in the cart. But this is really good exercise because it strengthens these back muscles and it gives you a whole lot of control putting the reins through here. And again, this is only when you do the ground driving at home. You don't do this at a show or when it's hooked up to the cart, it would be too dangerous. So the, the reins normally obviously go through the uh, turrets there. So the first thing we do in the ground driving is lots of circles and bending. And circles are your friend. You can do this anywhere. I happen to be in my round pin because it's the only dry place I got right now. But you can do this in, in their pins. You can do this anywhere because it doesn't take a whole lot of room. You're just wanting them walk, to bend and give you their faces. So what I do is I do about a couple minutes. Oh, and by the way, notice my hands. I've got the whip here, and I've got the reins, and I am standing more by her side, the back, not right by her side, but right back, because I'll show you why in a minute. Once we get her trotting, you cannot keep up with the donkey trotting. So you have to and it'll all be in circles because that's what the designed task is and what we want them to do and it keeps them, builds them up on their sides. Now one more thing, this rain on this side at this time she is moving to the right. I am on her inside, she is moving around me. This rain is called the inside rain. The other rein is called the outside rein. Walk. And you always want to keep the outside rein taut also. Don't let it just loop down and not do anything because it has control also of the movement. So when you're driving a cart, you have both hands on the reins and they are both doing their own jobs. So, uh, this is the inside rein, that's the outside rein. Now, if we switch directions, this rein becomes the inside rein, this one becomes the outside rein, and I move my whip to my right hand, where it was in my left hand before. Walk on. So, and you notice that rein, I can't, don't know if you can see it, but it's twisted. So it's nice to get it without the twist in it because believe it or not, she can feel everything I'm doing with my hands. Walk. And you notice as she walks more in these circles, her head's getting lower and lower. And that's stretching all of the stop line here. Builds muscles, gets her stronger, to move from the back to the front with her back end. It's just all good stuff. So that's what we're doing to get warmed up, I guess you could say. The other thing great about ground driving is when you're teaching one, you are teaching them the commands at the same time. So, um, 
That's what the ground driving does also, is teach them to move on your certain commands. Walk on, Betty. Walk on. Walk on. I want her to pick up her walk a little. Walk on. Walk on. Good girl. Walk on. So she moves out a little more. I'm going to make her do a little circle here. The circles aren't real small. Betty, walk. But they're harder for them to keep the faster speeds in the circles. So the faster you go, the wider the circle is, the bigger the circle is. So don't think you can just turn them, because here's what happens when you turn them in a small circle, and this is also a training tool. When you turn them in a small circle, you control that outside rain more, look what you get. You get the, the haw in this direction. See how she's crossing over? Whoops, I just tripped. So, that outside rain is a big deal. You start giving less rain and ask her to keep going forward. The only place she has to go is a ha moving over her. There you go. Walk. I'm going to change directions. But you want to really do your directions evenly so you're not doing one side more than the other, unless they're stiffer on one side and you've noticed that, then you walk on. Betty, walk. Betty, walk. Walk on. You see how she's getting her head way down? She won't do that in the cart, but she's doing that today because it feels good to stretch. Getting a little too close to me, so I'm moving her out. So, she is warmed up now, and what we're going to do now is move into the trot. She just heard me say trot. So, I'm going to move out a little bit. Trot, Betty. And you notice how I am to the side? As long as she's trotting, I'm not going to bother her. I'm not going to use the whip. I'm not going to use my voice. If she slows down, I need to move my whip, use my whip. Betty, trot. Now, I didn't tell her to stop, but she's doing that because I'm talking. Walk. Walk. Keep it up. So you can practice your changes gate changes from the walk to the trot and from the trot to the walk. Now, what she did there that I am going to practice here just a second is when she came down to the walk, she kind of stopped. She's, they need to keep this walk that they had before they went into the trot when they come down. So the change of gates are really important. Betty, trot. Give her a little, yes, I did say trot. By the way, this is really, takes a lot out of them. This is hard work. Walk. I wanted to keep her going. So we're going to change directions. And I'm just going to, you may have to stop and change directions. She's done this enough where she, she can change directions quite easily. Move my whip to my right hand. Betty, trot. So I'm to her right. I mean, I'm to her side. So I am not walking very much. I am taking little steps because I'm too old to follow this fast. So I'm going to let her go straight because I got room in my round pin for a minute and I'm just going to walk with her till I get tired. Then I'm going to bring her in a circle again.
Walk. I'm going to try to keep her moving when she comes down to that walk. Ready? Walk. Boo. Okay, then you want to practice your back. Back. Try to keep it straight. You can see she's moving crooked. The way you can fix that is with your hands when you're backing, do this, pulsing a little bit. And that way, most of the time, it straightens them up. So, Betty, walk. Walk up. So, practice standing in your session. They have to stand. Now, if they're pulling on your hands at all, that's unacceptable in this, in this hoe when they're standing still. She backed up, got off of the bit. I did not pull her back to tell her to hoe. She walked into the bit. When I told her hoe, she pulled on me. And I'm not moving my hands. She has to fit her body in my hands. Betty, walk. Okay, so we're going to practice that ho. Walk up. Walk up. Walk up. Ho. And I just set my hands. I didn't pull. I just set my hands. If I want her to back, then I'm going to do this little thing here where it keeps her backing straight, hopefully. Betty, walk. The things you can come across when you're ground driving them, Betty, walk, is they can spin on you so that they can actually come in around. And the reason that happens is because you don't have enough control on this outside rain. If that happens, it's your problem. You caused it. They, you let them do that by not having good contact on their mouths especially with this outside rain, because that's how they do it. They flip in on you. Walk on. And even with her who has done this a lot and is in good shape, walk. I don't do this much longer than about 20 minutes probably, because it's a lot of work. And they get tired of it really quick. So if you who. I'm going to make her stand a minute here. If you make it short, get all your stuff done. Plan it ahead of time of what problems you have or what issues you want to address more than the other ones. And I'll finish up here by showing you how I do the G and Ha. Betty, walk. Since I'm in my round pen, walk on. I'm going to go over to the fence. Walk on. Move behind her. Ooh. We're not that close to the fence, but it does give a feeling to the donkey. Now she's trying to, she doesn't want to stand still and I'm not moving my hands at all. She's bumping into them and she has to back off because it's not comfortable for her. She keeps kind of pushing on me. And this is all vo verbal. Betty, G. Now I'm just keeping my hands where they were pretty much and not letting her go too forward. And she turns around real nice. Walk. Walk. Ooh. And she has to stand here. And if you forget to practice the standing, this is what happens. They don't get used to standing and they get fidgety. They gotta know 
that they have to stand. Now, I am just standing right where I stopped. If she moves a little to the left or right, ah, that's okay. But she cannot go forward and should not come back. Not moving my hands. Just standing here. She fits to me. Okay, we're going to do the haw. And I'm using my whip just in case I need it. Betty haw. My hands aren't pulling. They're just stationary right where she left them, right when we stopped at the stop. Oh. Now that she's quiet, I'm going to let her go. So I'll show you what your goal could be once you get this well under control. And it takes practice from you, too, to get your hands all right on these reins and stuff. But, Betty, try. I'll show you what you can do. You can go around stuff. Turn them in the trot. That's amazing. If they can do that, and um, any ones that I've trained can, then that's very cool. Most of them quit trotting when they do that, because that's hard. So I'm going to do that one again to this, changing to this side, because she stopped. She does this one okay. And you want to keep her going. Ooh. Because she did that so well, I'm giving her a reward just to stand here. Now, you never stand with drooped reins. Don't forget that. If you l just droop them, she doesn't know what you want or where you, what you're doing. You stand here with reins feeling her mouth right where you left them when you stopped. Betty, walk. So, 